Hello, hello, just making sure audio levels are coming through. YouTube and Twitch both look like you're connected, yay! Technically we're early, but it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over here. I see lots of little conversations already going, so I just want to say hello just a tad bit early too. Hi! Welcome to the Rockfish stream! Oh my gosh, I am your host, your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I am joined by Gary, your community manager on the comms. Hey Gary! Awesome! Oh, so you didn't me in. <laughs> I didn't cue you in. I would see what would happen, I suppose. Oh, uh, no, that's, that's great. Uh, but we are here to serve you th for the next two hours in these dev streams. Uh, every time we do a dev stream, the major focus is you guys. We do this for you. It's, that's why we do these. So anytime you have any sort of questions or you have an appeal for what's up and coming, you know, that's why you can have direct contact with us. You can, you know, throw those things out there. I do want to put a little bit of emphasis real quickly, though, just kind of we're moving into some new territory. So just some little disclaimers if you will if you're asking questions about what that content specifically looks like you're probably not going to get an immediate answer we do have a distribution plan of said content so even as i'm teasing you today with stuff that has not been shown before mind you uh, there are plans in place as to why we're showing these right now and not other things that are definitely also coming that you had no idea are in the works that's how we're going to continue forward with this. We're going to be highlighting little teases and whatnot just to, you know, sprinkle that goodness on our pathway to this fall free content update, which will apply to all users. It's going to be PC. It's going to be console. It's going to be, you know, the full full gambit. OK, it's not exclusive to one. Uh, that would be uh, silly. And you don't have to pay a dollar for it. It's all going to be free content of what we're working for this particular free content update. Lots of words, lots of words, um, but my goodness, I am, I'm a little cold today. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, maybe a little bit, need a little bit more movement. So I'm going to definitely get my uh, dance on during super light. We're going to tackle that. Very good. Um, major focus today. Of course, we are teasing a little bit of new content, as I pr previously said, probably going to be in the form of set items. And we'll probably also see some new item attributes uh there will be a little other tiny adjustments here and there probably that i will talk about but uh yeah that's just how this all works it's gonna be good time for starters just a quick little note from last two weeks ago two weeks ago the stream i had autonomous plating equipped on the ship and you'll notice that now it's just a common plating boo that sucks uh, very intentional that I've placed this here. That is because the autonomous plating may or may not uh, exist anymore. We'll talk a little bit more about that should it come up, but I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about regardless. As you all very much know, this whole developing new content is a work in progress formula. Sometimes we do go in a direction that simply 
doesn't work the way that we intended it to or just isn't as fun as we would like it to be, those things will get ousted. You might see some of those additions that are then yoinked. So just part of the process, you probably understand that because you're gamers and you probably have a pretty decent sense of how developers operate. But if you don't, well, that's how we operate. Cool. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just crack on into these things. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were literally, we just purchased a scout and we got a rail gun. Yeah, good, good. And I believe what I spoke on in two weeks ago is that I wanted to crack into the Kite Nebula. And that's exactly, we're gonna get started <laughs> right away. Um, even though I should probably review more of my ship specs and details, but it'll be fine, right? I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yes, thank you. announces that outlaw forces have yet again gained strength in the CETO and Union systems. That's not good news. Actually, that is good news. I was I was waiting for that to occur because I was noticing there were a number of locations, particularly in Union, that were not uh, high enough level for me to accrue very much goodness. And because all of these side missions are here, for any of you who did not know this, guess what? Those side missions also get leveled up. Okay, those side missions also get leveled up. The citizens of Velocity, don't worry about that one, but the other, these are actually leveling up as these spaces do as well. So that's gonna be really nice for us in regards to getting XP and new items instead of having just like wait it out and or rather grind against super low levels until something dropped. Cool. Is it new that consumables in the inventory show the hotkey to activate them? I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure that's been there. I'm pretty sure that's been there. I have it deactivated to have the... Well, actually, no, I don't, because it shows the devices. You can deactivate that on the HUD. Um, but, uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention that specifically. Uh, Geekbyte just said in the text, uh, in the chat, um, that I am using a dev build, which is how I'm able to show you some new stuff that we're working on. Um, and, yeah, because of that, you could see stuff that's definitely not finished yet. I'm going to try to avoid showing those types of things, but there are still some playful things that we can show that we've been working on that we know you're excited about. That we know that you're excited about. All right, let's practice our aim a little bit before we get too crazy. Because those redeemers, oh gosh, look, I'm already missing shots. Those redeemers are going to be merciless once we get in there. Wait, that's too far? What? Okay, there we go. We are playing cheeky today. And it feels good. Those look like I might need to purchase a new um, energy core, though, because this one kind of sucks. I'm not getting a lot of energy for my railgun. I would like to keep it up before he recharges his shields. Whoop. All right. We're going to just let that recharge all the way first. What do we have? What are we using? We have a Storm Chaser multi cell. All right. Yeah, so our shield and boost is really good, but our weapons suck. All right, all right, yeah. Hmm. We might just change this out for this for the moment. Just for the moment. If we can get more stacks of Storm Chaser and probably on a different ship, that would probably be best for us. But on the scout, hmm, Storm Chaser is kind of a close range set. So it probably isn't our best option. Man, I really want to maximize damage. The further you are with the scout, it's kind of common knowledge, but for those of you who have never flown the scout before, the scout gains a damage boost the further away you are from your target. All right. I think this is close enough to where we can start just dealing with them. There we go. Neat. All right. Hey, hey, favorite time sync of a game's dev stream? <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, I actually, I, I very much enjoy diving into Everspace 2 intermittently. I also go back to Everspace 1, I found um, a number of times just because it's, I just really like the combat. I mean, I'm. it's not even, it's not even like, a, oh, hey, I'm trying to sell this to you. I'm a dev and this is the game that we made. No, it's like, I just enjoy it. Um, I, I just, I just really enjoy it. You don't really get that from a lot of other games these days. I feel like in order to get like this type of space sort of combat, you have to go way back to like Wing Commander and Privateer and Star Wars X-Wing, like, you know? Does that make sense? It just, it feels like it just hasn't been done a lot. So, I, was, I just like it. I just like it. All right, we gotta try and fire fast enough to break the shields. Okay, good. And now we can hit hard. Get wrecked. No, we missed. Oh. No, he got his shield back. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on a second. Everything's terrible. This is problems. Okay. And there's already so many of them. Oh goodness. Well, the music's definitely stressing me. I don't know about you guys. Jeez. All right, let's see. What options do we have here? Really don't want to do close quarter combat in a scout. It's not going to be effective. Ah, uh, mm. uh, mm. Very tempted though. All right, let's see if we can uh, break the shields. There we go. Big hit. Yes. Death. Good, good, good. Some of these drones out of the picture. I'm surprised that actually killed them, but okay. We'll take it. Here we go. Not shooting. I know it's not very effective because we're using a kinetic-based weapon on shields, but you know what? If it works, it works, right? All right. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good so far. We are um, a bit under leveled for this area, but I told you guys a couple weeks ago that I wanted to dive into it, so we are. We are gonna play a little bit more cautiously than normal. But that doesn't mean stuff won't be able to show up. Oh man, that's, that's huge, honestly. want the drone. Okay, there we go. How many are there? Wait a second. What's our range? We have a five kilometer ship range. Why am I not detecting more of them? That's interesting. No, you know what? I want you... Oh, no. I used the wrong device. Shoot. I was going to try and uh, magnetic repulsor the elite. We'll have to reposition ourselves. They'll come here, and then we're gonna mess with them. It does mean that they'll get their shields back. Put it in yourself. Put it in yourself. was actually uh, way more damage than I would have liked it to have done. Oh, shoot! Buddies showed up. All right. Let's see how much damage we can crank out. All right. Not an effective use of the alts on that sense, but... Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. Hmm. 
Now we do have some pretty nice tools to help recover our health and our hold. One of those is being used right now. It is a device. It's on our fourth slot. Come on, get the shield. Okay, good. All right, changing targets around a lot here. Should be okay. Wish of color. Oh no, not a drone. Oh, that's problems. You need to die. Okay. All right. Just the one left. Should be okay. That's what it's like playing a nightmare around the same level that you are uh, progressing the story or under the level. Every single combat is like edge of your seat excitement. It's nice for those of you who want it. Also get a towel because your hands will need to be dried off. <laughs> All right, let's do a little bit of exploration here and oh, picking up some stuff. How did I miss that dark energy? It's much more exclusive to this zone, actually. Dark energy does drop primarily from redeemers and also ancients. So good to sneak in and do that. I look over at chat. Thank you so much, Gary, for reminding the audience how many times I've died. People ask the question, so I'm more than happy to provide the answer. Makes sense, <laughs> makes sense. Now, truth be told, I'm surprised that it's only been 19 times. It's dang near once per level. That's, uh, I feel like that ain't too bad. I wonder if we can get this guy. Come on. Wonderful. Everyone loves the loot goblin. Feels good. I'm gonna break this apart and then just suck it in from afar. I don't want to deal with that radiation. Radiation is a devious element here in Everspace 2. It actually decreases your overall health of your ship. So it's not like a damage over time effect. It just literally reduces the amount of damage you can take from basically all of those sources. Get a little closer. Perfect. Man, I'm playing far more closely with the scout than I think I should, but... All right. All right, we have a secure container. I see a light. I see more lights. It's almost like they're all connected. Where does it start? Right here. Cool. Some of these little challenges we offer are just, just little challenges of observation. And if you are playing Everspace 2 as sort of an exploration game, it should feel great. It should fit right in, honestly. Just keep your eyes peeled. Gonna grab a couple more things. Ooh. Big baddie groups warping in, and another elite. I'm gonna probably call that good. Actually, no, we can we can take these guys. A little closer than I thought they were, though. Woo. Noise. Just get the shield. Oh, this feels kind of gimmicky. But we're gonna do it because it works. Yes. Neat. Now there was also a ship that I sniped over here. I want to make sure that he didn't drop some loot because my loot detection kind of sucks. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought. 
I just want to make sure there's not any loot that you dropped. You sniped. Cool. All right, let's let's head out of here. Let's go to some new locations. Woo! -hoo. I'm explorer with the gunship. Yeah, a lot of people like the gunship we've been discovering. A lot of people been liking the gunship, and that's great. That's great. I feel like more of you out there need to give a little more love to the light ships. I haven't seen a lot of people rocking the light ships, so I'm glad to be doing that today. I see a comment Spoot Knight says on, on Twitch. Says, Remember when tap firing the railgun was extremely good? I mean, we didn't actually nerf it that much, but you can probably see a difference here in the in this particular uh, build. We did make some adjustments to that. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier in the stream. If you are new here um, and you're asking questions in the chat and I'm like completely ignoring them, um, there's two reasons for that. One, I am kind of ignoring them because we want to have specific segments of the stream to where we're answering questions. So just be patient. Uh, you don't have to like ask your question 50,000 times. Uh, one of the things that Gary does exceptionally well is catalog all those questions so they don't get missed. So we'll make sure that you're well taken care of and provide as much information as we humanly possibly can. In the meantime, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and make fun of bad things that happen, and rejoice in the awesome things. I'll also, um, I'm getting a little bit of lag-ish. If the stream starts to drop really bad, I will convert to 30 frames per second mode. I'm going to try and keep it at 60 frames per second as long as I can. Ask those questions that you have, and I'm hoping that sooner than later we're going to see some new drops. This looks a little more frisky than I would like it to be. <laughs> the music is so, like, boss mode -y. Like, what in the world? I'm also going to change this real quick. I, I just want to make sure that um, we don't have any issues here. So... Oh my goodness! A second. Oh, is he behind the- Oh! We are way too close to maximize this damage, but... A kill is a kill, right? There we go. For those of you listening to the music tracks, there have been some revisions. I am kind of uh, teasing that by saying, oh man, you know, it feels kind of boss modey and stuff. Um, Gero's been hard at work on making some improvements to the in-game tracks while we've been working on the, uh, um, the, uh, the, um, the sound thing. <laughs> <laughs> words words are difficult sometimes the soundtrack that's what it's called <laughs> wow so if it does sound a little bit new it uh, might actually be I think this was actually one of the tracks that was tweaked a little bit come here I'm not done with you Why is distracted? I made that so much easier. Cool. Ah, oh, good XP too from this area. That's that feels really good. That feels nice. Are more tracks coming? Um, that's a hard question to answer. It's possible, but not going to guarantee anything. Um, a big thing that we've been wanting to do is just making the tracks stand out just a little bit further if we can. Um, especially in order to make that soundtrack just really pop, right? 
it's it's funny because like you know of course we had a lot of the soundtracks done for the game before we started optimizing the soundtrack and as we were optimizing the soundtrack it's like hey you know what would be really cool is if we adjusted this like this and adjusted that like that yeah it's just been coming together really nice this guy is beefcake level 18 elite Very good, very good. Grab some scrap metals. Ooh, I see, I see a really awesome question um, from Cyrus Jin. Looking forward to answering some questions here in just a moment. We'll get through them. Ramen. Delicious. Flack. Okay. Oh, oh, we're full. We're full up. All right. We start taking care of some of this stuff. that we're next to a station here. Good quick reminder for you that I am skipping a lot of the dialogue and or story components. I'm mostly focusing on gameplay because I'm technically going for a 100% completion on Nightmare difficulty. Ah, we still have a lot to do, but that's going to speed things along a little bit. Just a little bit more. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, ooh, ah, hmm, that seems different. That seems new. Let's have a look at this. Blightmonger Hazard Plating grants immunity to radiation while armor is up. That's a fancy little star right there. Have I ever seen that star before? Hmm. Yes, I have. But you haven't because it's brand new. Anytime an item has an item trait now, it will have that little star that's unique to the item. So that's not any part of a set bonus ability. That is just what the item has. Uh, as an example, uh, psh, do we have a, a, another another thing to, oh yeah, here. So like the, the Rattler here that we've been using, uh, weapon damage and projectile velocity are increased up to 20% depending on how fast the ship is moving. That's also got a star next to it, just to indicate that particular item uh, attribute. So, yep, that's where that comes from completely unique for this particular plating. So let's go ahead and uh, look and see what this does. It also has 10% increased destabilized damage. We do have destabilizer missiles too. We might be purchasing this, even though it is incredibly expensive. 10K for the armor, hoo hoo hoo. Right. Lightmonger set, let's, let's, let's inspect, let's inspect. A set of two. Enemies will take 20% increased corrosion damage. All right. Three stacks. Each stack of corrosion on an enemy grants you 1% armor regeneration per second. What? And four. Four items in the set. You got them all. Targets affected by corrosion take 50% increased damage from your secondary weapons. Oh! If it wasn't clear, this set is corrosive. It's a it's a nasty set. I like it. I like it. Um, so uh, in order to make space for these new things, we need to sell some stuff. As I think I saw somebody say something about, I need to sell over in the chat. 
and we will. We're gonna sell some liquor, we're gonna sell some medicine, uh, some clothing, some ramen. That's already opening up the doors in such a better way. I want, I want to use you, but now is not the time, unfortunately. We are going to go ahead and sell whew, quite a few things, I think. And since we are kind of like going through this, I mean, I do one quick look through this just to see if there's anything else to kind of like talk about really quickly. Oh yeah, here's a speed word, by the way. You can see it also has that star only recharges while boosting just to make that item trait stand out a little bit more. So this is applicable as a retroactive sort of adjustment to the UI. Uh, let's see, anything else to talk about? Nope, doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna do my little trading interactions here, but Gary, let's go ahead and start answering some questions while I'm in here. And the music is, oh. is the music too loud actually? This is kind of loud. Hang on. We're just gonna, we're gonna tone the music down. Just gonna have it calm down for a little bit while we're answering some questions. And we'll turn it back up in a moment, so. Right, let's dive in then. Um, Soul Matty Matt over on Twitch. Um, I was thinking uh, on the topic of numbers um, that we saw earlier, it said they wish that they could see a quantifiable number for health and energy, etc. When you level up, it says you gain X amount of us in a stat increase, but it would be nice to see exactly how much they have as an option. Has that ever been discussed? Well, there were a number of discussions as to how the level up needed to be conveyed. Um, and the short of it, I, it really comes down to, we just wanted to give as many numerical values as possible so that it was as transparent as possible. That being said, there are a lot of numbers that come up and sometimes it can get a little bit, you know, much, if you will. In fact, on the items that I'm looking at right now, I have the advanced display so I can see even more of those numbers. So if this looks crazy and you're like, it's overwhelming me, uh, you don't have to turn on sort of the advanced stats that show like the velocity and spread, stuff like that for details within. Um, but as far as how that's being displayed, I mean, there were a number of ways that we had to go through and figure out how it needed to be presented to the player and ultimately settled on that one. And we do feel that it's the best one uh, to be as transparent as possible and also the easiest as possible, however challenging it may feel uh, to you. So there's not really any call to action from our end to adjust that any further. Um, it's, it's very likely going to stay the way it is. Yeah. Um, next question, please. Excellent. Uh, Uzi Mackie King over on YouTube uh, is wondering, will there ever be a way to customize the color of the lasers projectiles from weapons? They've noticed that it changes randomly when equipping new weapons and they would like their favorite color on the strongest weapon. Yeah, this was something that we had discussed through the process of early access as a nice to have. And um, well, we added a lot of content that the community had requested alongside some new general ideas that we had through that process. Um, and yeah, color customization for weapons that just never, it never really happened. That's not to say it's completely off the table. It is something that we've, uh, we've had a discussion at least once uh, after 1.0 but still it's it's not a priority. It's not something that we think is vital, um, however cool it might be. You know, we do have it to where ships can now be customized a little bit further with the uh, randomization option, right? So um, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's something to completely scoff at, right? We have the, the randomization to just like add different colors, right? Um, so we are looking at more of that customization in the territories surrounding that um but yeah it's still it's it's not something that's of a great importance we don't feel like um and even more so a lot of the higher end equipment we have standing out regardless of color anyway so like a lot of the legendaries they have a specific color and if we got into sort of like customization on that front. Would it also have to apply to legendaries? What would that look like? That's gonna change sort of the visualizations of that. It opens up new complications. I'm talking way too much. The point is you're asking about weapons having colors, their projectile colors modified. It's something that we are looking at, something we are evaluating, but it is not something we are going to promise. It's not something that we're even prioritizing. So just know that it's, 
on the radar, but not in the plans. So, next question, please. Uh, excellent. Right. Um, Pesky Husky over on YouTube. Uh, do you plan on expanding on this awesome platform the Rockfish Games team has created? Not necessarily like any uh, Everspace 3, but multiple add-ons and DLC. So the, the question is basically, what's the plan for the future of Everspace 2, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so what we've publicly said is that we are doing at least one free content update and at least one uh, premium DLC. What does that mean? What What's the difference between a free content, which is you'd have to download, so it's technically downloadable content, and what's a premium DLC? Is that like a special term for something? Yeah, free content means it's straight up going to be available to you this fall. A lot of what I'm showing you, like this uh, Blightmonger, we have a bunch of new sets that we're going to be adding into the game space, as well as a slew of other things that we've kind of been discussing over the course of the streams. And we'll have more uh, compact moments to share what more that looks like, probably even sooner than later in some regards. And again, that's all going to be for free. It's just going to be expanding the itemization in a lot of cases, but it's not going to be changing any sort of foundational core gameplay systems. We don't want to do that. In fact, we're very happy with the base of Everspace 2 um, and all of that's going to remain the same. It's just adding more stuff that's going to diversify your ability to play the game your way. Lots of new little additions on that front. The premium DLC, that is going to be a purchasable expansion for the game. It's going to be quite sizable. It's going to have story content. It's going to have a lot of rich, meaningful components that extend Everspace 2, okay? So that's going to be what truly like maximizes uh, the world building and the characters and you know the combat and all of that. That's where you're gonna get a big chunk of expanding the game is from that premium DLC. Uh, we do not have an official date for that. We've been communicating that it would be um, uh, next year, but just, uh, just put an asterisk next to that. I'm sure that we'll have more information um, whenever we are able to share more information um, about any new content, in fact. Could be about the, the DLC, could be about other stuff. Who knows? I sure as heck don't. Cool, next question. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, right, uh, a question from Magic and Sparkle over on Twitch. Uh, and they're just wondering, what would be your top tips for a new player to mm. the game? I love this question so much. And, you know, honestly, there are so many different directions that you can take it. We do feel pretty good about the tutorialization of the game, just going through the starting area and learning how to control your ship is so vital. It's so vital. It's why we made that kind of rudimentary in its introduction where it's like, push this button to move this direction, right? Like um, we did that very, very intentionally as Ben, your buddy, is helping you do kind of like a routine startup and, and uh, nav controls. Um, so that you get that down. That is like the number one most important thing as a new player that you have to get down. You got to control your ship well. And we give you all the tools to do so. So practice that. Practice moving left to right, up and down. Um, rolling is not nearly as necessary, but if you like that, practice rolling too. It can be useful at times. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I think the next best thing on that front is devices, devices, devices. If you're not using your devices, you are missing out a core component that is going to bring you success in Everspace 2. The reason why we've designed these devices in the way that we have is so that you can maximize the fun factor in varying builds. I forgot that I leveled, we need to add this. Um, every single one of the devices has some sort of um, potent effect for a particular playstyle. EMP is probably the most generalized one that just it's so well rounded. It's it's there's no reason not to use it unless you need space for a different thing that's more powerful for a particular build you're using. Uh, but EMP like it's just it, it can do damage. But more importantly, it disables all of your enemies from doing damage. So yeah, th those are gonna be the two big things. And then of course, we'll move on from there. But but again, 
Maneuverability, you have to get your controls down. That is priority one. Just practice flying around, dodge some asteroids, boost through them. Understand your boosting goes in all directions, for example, that's also key. And then the second thing is devices, devices, devices. Use your devices. They are going to maximize your ability to succeed. Cool. All right, let's move on. Next question, please. Oh, yeah. Don't forget your ultimates, folks. Eric does. <clears throat> um, we have a question from <laughs> Sirius Jen on Twitch. Um, when areas come up saying 100% complete uh, when you found all the containers, is there a way to find out how far you are off from 100% or know how many items there are left to find. So when it says 100% complete in an area, that's referring to specifically laid items and locations that will trigger that 100% completion. There are also randomly generated goods that can appear in a location and those don't matter towards the percentage. So if you get 100% completion and you see a bunch of containers somewhere and you're like, wait, I haven't actually completed everything. No, 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 you have you found the secretest stuff in the location. The other stuff can just randomly regenerate. Same things with resources as well. All of those things are going to be um, distinct from one another. Uh, even earlier in the stream, we saw a valuable shipwreck. That's gonna be going towards your 100% completion as opposed to just a normal shipwreck, which is not. And the loot in the valuable shipwreck is gonna be much more important than just what you find in a standard shipwreck. Cool. Hopefully that's the clarity desired on that end. Cool, cool. Uh, let's do, uh, uh, how many more questions do we have? On two more, two more lines. All right, yeah, let's do them both. Okay. Cool. Uh, quick one from Slorine over on YouTube. Uh, are there any plans to add the new versions of FSR and DLSS, uh, maybe with the premium DLC further down the line? Um, FSR and DLSS, like the, the 3.0 and, and stuff like yeah. that? Um, yeah, I mean, so we've we've kind of been answering this uh, a bit more than usual, and that's it's totally fine because you know a lot of people are, are really excited about it. But the short of it is that's not something we are like determined on. It's not something we're like hyper focused on. We want to add more content to the game. That's the that's the main goal right now. We want to enrich Everspace 2 with a bunch of free stuff because we can, and then we want to work on an outstanding addition, this expansive uh, uh, plug into the everspace universe with that content on that front um as far as you know all those fancy little tricks and bells and whistles surrounding the experience do we desire it i mean sure we do but just keep in mind it's not going to be the, our focus that we have right now and if it does end up changing to a focus for whatever reason we would communicate on the fronts um, and let you know when we have something to share on uh on that basically so yeah the really, really short answer is no, not planned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 do the last question. My last question coming up from I am the law 42 over okay. on Twitch. Um, has there been any discussion around rifts, uh, particularly high level rifts of 750 plus to drop more than one legendary at a time? Nope, no, we were very intentional about capping the lunacy 500 point as our uh, middle ground topped off legendary always uh, situation. We have a assortment of players that approach Everspace 2 and we knew that we were going to. I mean, the demographics that we were calling out towards, it's, it's vast. It's not just like these hyper precise, give me a challenge gamers. Like we also have a slew of those who just wanna sit back, relax and explore and extract what the universe has to offer. And through that, we want to make sure that we're not content gating too hard at least with skill checks. And so we're not planning on making it um, any easier for players uh, who have insane skill to just milk items more and more and more. Of course, there will be some attunement to the item system since we are adding more items as well as more attributes, all of that type of stuff. So you'll see some subtle changes that will benefit everyone as much as possible. But in regards to rifts and making it um, easier to gain legendaries for example uh no that's there's there's no plans there's no plans there are going to be some tweaks to rifts though in the future though so stay tuned on that one cool. nice all right so that's all the questions for now uh keep asking those questions we'll have another segment where we answer them i 
Oh, I have to sell this. It's just too close range. It's just not going to be too useful for me. Um, I say that and I've been getting close up using the rattler, but still, I digress. Um, we're going to sell a lot of this stuff. Hmm. I'm going to keep the Prime Sense Observer for now. Going to keep it for now. Let's see. Almost done with all of this uh, buying and selling stuff. I'm also kind of like hovering over some of the item attributes because there's a chance that you might see a little bit new. Um, actually, if you're a new newcomer to the streams, you're going to see a lot of new modifiers because we're adding a lot. Whew! Boy, are we adding a lot. At some point, we're going to highlight basically all of them, um, which will be like a 10 hour long stream because reading them all off. But uh, but yeah, so I'm not really going to go through those today. But if you see something new, um, I don't even think these are new, but technically, you know, it's possible to see them. That's my point. Oh, I really, really don't want to get rid of this Synchro Pulse, but we're going to get rid of the Synchro Pulse. Oop. We able to equip this? What's going on? There's definitely a bug here because I shouldn't be able to equip this, but I'm not complaining too much. It's a level 18 and it has not been modified. But, ah. Bugs! They happen in dev builds, believe it or not. This cloak field generator, I think, is gonna be more useful than the energy. We're just gonna we're gonna sell that commodity. Nanofibers, that is the oh gosh, we're gonna hang on to that. That's not too bad. We're going to go ahead and activate that just to have it out of the inventory. All right, back to space. I want to try and do this racetrack, even though uh, I probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, we don't have the best handling in this uh, ship. I know some of you are thinking, what? What are you talking about? The scout's like super nimble. Yes. Um, in fact, it is. It's, it's uh, probably the third most nimble ship. But the Stinger and the uh, Vanguard are better. Vanguard, oh my gosh, Vanguard is my love when it comes to racing. Jeez. So, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Hey, Maurice. I love you sharing your story. I just don't care right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Probably should have saved before doing it. Ah, well, we, we, it's fine. We technically did. Please don't get, oh, oh, I didn't boost. Oh, pfft. missed opportunity for boosting. It's fine, probably. At least our boost energy comes back pretty dang fast. Music is still going hard. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not. Because I do actually like it. I really don't want to get corroded, but okay. This is a not optimized run at all. But hey, if I can complete the challenge for the moment. I'll feel good. And then we'll come back and destroy it with a Vanguard. Almost there. Oh, wow. Are we going to get gold? Wow. I honestly, I'm surprised we got a gold there. That, that seemed uh, to be much better than I was... It was much better than I was anticipating, honestly. Oh, yeah. Ah, that always feels good. Now, fun fact, whenever you are cloaked, 
and you fire, enemies will fire back at you, but you're not technically revealed. They fire at the point of where you fired from with a little bit of leading based on your last known movement. So if you fire and you start getting fired at, even though you're still cloaked, move around a little bit. They won't be able to hit you. Just move around, don't fire anything. Just stay cloaked. It'll be fine, probably. All right, there's lots of stuff that we are discovering here. Lots of secure containers. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some of it. We just need to pull these energy units out. Mm, back up, back up, back up. Beep, beep. Perfect. One more. I'm really hoping that we can find more of that Blightmonger set, because I think there's some there's some fun pieces in it. Whoop whoop. Sensor, ship module, beam laser, okay, alright. But where's the new stuff? Oh, some more medicine. I'll take that. That'll sell decent. Right here. that area oh I didn't realize we were close enough to the stranded ship here that's awesome I just have to find a way in I think it's over here yeah hello there Excellent. Believe it or not, it's a little hard to control the scout getting him uh, settled in there. Noise. So fun fact, the Okar actually do not like water. Uh, like at all. Water is, is not something that is pleasant to them. Uh, this is actually why their home worlds plural. Their home worlds are desert planets. This has been the established lore even since Everspace 1. And water, yeah, they just, they don't mix well with water. It doesn't mean they don't drink, because clearly they can. But most of the time they don't. There's still a lot of stuff in this territory, but I want to I want to keep going. We're going to keep going. Got to keep going. I see some discussions about um, looking around in areas. Uh, I just I want to I want to dive into this uh, discussion really briefly um, just to bring it to light and you know if those of you out there are also like oh yeah i feel the same or no i disagree Man, it's, you know just just want to point this out so cyrus uh jen says discovering the puzzle elements to the game has been one of the most fun aspects and them getting gradually trickier as the story goes on i spent far too long inside an area that has the fan that kept blowing me back i was looking for a button to stop it didn't realize for ages that i could just fly through the fan when it had stopped <laughs> <laughs> the worst is when there is just one more hidden chest to go in an area and you are not finding it for a long time. And I completely agree. In fact, the team completely agrees on that front. I'm not sure if you were present to a previous stream regarding this or not, but I will say that this is something that the team has been observing more commonly than not. We do enjoy the puzzles. We're very happy with uh, how players are receiving them and uh, unearthing them. But 
We also have to acknowledge that there has been a bit of frustration surrounding them too. And we don't want there to be, obviously. Now, part of it is just like, you need to get good scrub and like use your eyes and look around. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that's part of it, okay? Some of you out there, you know that, okay? I'm just telling you the truth, I'm telling you like it is, okay? But for others, totally get it. You've got 12 out of 13 secrets unlocked. You're gonna spend like 30 minutes looking around and you're just like losing your damn mind and you're just like, where is it? Where, where is it? We get you, we hear you, and we are doing something about that with more information to share later on that topic. Oh my gosh, teased all the way up to it and then cut off but just have to just really want to hammer that home guys you are heard i can assure you this is something we have been tracking something that we have been listening on um and again we do feel really good about how we composed these elements but we also recognize that some people including some of our own team members could use just a tweak or two in uh, getting through it All right, let's get some signals here. Sure are impressive. Is there anything you can tell me about them, Hunt? Phasium Crystal. Mm. This is like one of my favorite crystals in the game. I just love the way that it um, it shows up. Just love the, I just love the visualization of, of Phasium. It almost has like a, um, almost like a diamond. Like it does this like luminescent sort of interaction going on. It's just, I just, visually, I think it's striking. I think it just looks delightful. Due to the unreliable Whenever we were designing the different ores, we did have a couple of like real world examples that we built off of, of course, because we're not aliens and, you know, we have to reference something in order to create something. But, um, Pretty, pretty certain that Phasium was designed kind of as like a sort of an alternate version of a diamond. Oh, is this where the, th oh, oh my gosh. I'm very excited to be here to get the thing. I just have to remember the order. Yes! Ugh. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm happy. This pleases me greatly. Look at this face. That feels good. All right, we are going to combine these mainframe components. I'm gonna beef up our structure, believe it or not. I know that might seem kind of like silly to a degree, but honestly, I have been discovering from my own personal play that having a little extra structure means that whenever I'm flying in light ships, which I normally am, um, I can actually take a damage before exploding. So that's, it's nice. It's nice to have more than two hit points. Um, Glass cannon all the way. Oh my gosh, Kazal. What if we can actually uh, change our settings to go up to um, back to 60? To oh yeah, nice and smooth. Oh, should have did that earlier. Pretty. Is this the one that's up the front? Yeah. Neat. Notice something um, either coincidental or a genius design regarding finding hidden chests. Do enemies spawn in a location a way to and? entice you to approach them to find a clue for a hidden chest? Yes, actually. Um, there are specific locations where enemies spawn in locations. Um, and we did a pretty solid job, I feel like, to make sure that the way that they're entering challenges the player's um, approach. 
and also guides them through the levels a little bit more too. <laughs> but uh, more so, we also do have a bit of level design going on just to help um, tell you, oh, hey, there's a thing here. Like even just the way that this looks right here, this little hole, this, this uh, smaller Leviathan skeleton, um, it tells you there's probably something in this territory, right? And then we see kind of like these broken eggs, dead eggs, not really sure what to call them, whatever it is. It's a nice visual representation of what's going on. But in a moment, we're going to have... Oh, no, we're not. Never mind. I think we got a lead on Eduardo. Seems like he went a little nuts and left on a walkabout. But we, we designed these levels pretty intentionally to make it to where it's guiding you through the territories. That's a big omelet. I like the way you think, honestly. That does sound delicious. <laughs> Now, what is this subspace anyway, and how are this 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 is going to be a little frisky territory for us. Um, but we're going to try anyway, and I'm really hoping more set items drop. I want to I want to show you more stuff. Sounds plausible. We'll talk about some more details and things if we can get it. Oh, the the music. Mmm. I hate killing the jellyfish. Yeah, you know, it does kind of feel bad, man. Feel bad, man. Anything yet, Hive? I detect the faintest inkling of a signal. All right, what levels we got? Oh, whew, whew. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to kind of dismantle these guys from afar. Like a song. Do the drain your shields from afar routine? Oh, it's not. It's not. This is not. It's not operating to the degree or capacity I would have liked it to. So let's do Plan B. Oh, he's gonna get armor. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get death. I'm too young to die. Ah, oh, he got his shield back. Oh man, these redeemers. Their shield regeneration is actually really good. Ah, let's charge up first. I wonder if we should be using Fusion Hook. I feel like I've been zipping around things more often than not. Almost there. Okay. See you later. Isolate and overpower, that's going to be our, our routine for a little bit, but it's going to serve us well. Re Redeemers are brutal when at a level disadvantage? Yes. Yeah. I mean, shoot, Redeemers Redeemers are actually really challenging even on normal difficulty. Um, they they do kind of they do kind of ramp up the difficulty factor. You come into the Kite Nebula, they are not messing around. So close. Yeah, so close. Oh yeah. There. Traversing the expanse is proving difficult by bouncing between the asteroids. I have a little bit of That's a lot of ships. And by a lot I mean three, but it's more it's more than two, and that's why I'm screwed. Especially that drone. No! No 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 she did the Ah! Ow! Ah. Uh. Mm. Pain. Oh! <laughs> oh gosh! The final hit to trigger my shield by a freaking user error. That, that is pain. Oh come on! Really? 
Really? I need a clear shot. Give me a clear shot. <laughs> Be smart. The sad part is that I was trying to use my... Oh, gosh. Ah, uh, this is death. Uh, unless we can get... Uh, uh. All right, we're just going to have to fight. Uh, woo -hoo -hoo. No, there's another one. Okay, all right, all right. Hey, guys. Another pro tip for beginners. Use your consumables. Okay. Give me health. Oh, my gosh. Okay, hang on. Goodness. That was fun. Missiles are also important, yes. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's been trashing you on YouTube as well for uh, good, using good. your nanobots, Excellent. devices, you consumables. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that question earlier about like some basic gameplay tips. Uh, don't do what I do during the streams. That's that's your pro tip right there. Do as he Woo! says, not as he does, ch children. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was. Uh, I was a bit more tense than it probably should have been for a number of reasons. Ah, 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 ah. You back off, worm. Oh, pain, pain. All right. So if anybody is wondering, I just just kind of pointing it out. Anybody's wondering, like, we have to align the signal right to receive it, and then we like we get the signal to start, and then we move. Somebody out there is probably like, you should have to like hold position to receive the signal. You can't just move and it automatically work. Yes, we can. It's called gamification. We didn't want it to be boring having you just sit in one spot waiting to hear a message, and if you move, have some sort of warning that's like, oh, you have to move back. You have to realign. It's just it just didn't seem uh, pleasant to us, so we didn't do that. Um, also, things that aren't pleasant, running into walls, because uh, you're not paying attention to the bugs that are in a cave. All right. Um, this this is a tricky this is a tricky spot to be in. We're gonna go get that other um, the other ping. We should honestly probably go back and um, uh, save, but. Um, repair, excuse me. But instead, I'm going to start another fight. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Remove your shields for me. There we are. Much better. One more time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't mind the fact that I keep forgetting to use my secondaries, but devices, I tell you what. I 
come in handy. So now I think our next one we have to go in here, right? Probably. We've only ever had one person, I think, kind of get a little bit um, trying to understand this mechanic here, but uh, whenever you grab these acid pouches, you do have to pull away from them because they are bound to um, to the ground. So you do have to pull away from them in order to get them to come up. Yeah, I can't tell what your hit points are, but I uh, know that I'm hitting you, so we're gonna just play it safe until you did. Come on. There we go. Yeah, you too. I'm not gonna lie, that sound just scared me. That little... Whew. I think there's another one somewhere. Probably. Always, it's always the one that you're least expecting. Ah, 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 ah. could leave the other way. I think we're going to do that. See how it's attached? Uh, pull away! There we go. Ooh. An Inquisitor's here? What? It'd be really silly to attack this thing. <laughs> yeah, that shield's, uh, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> but I want the loot. Come on, you can do it. Oh, of course. Yeah, the problem is that this isn't very engaging uh, <laughs> gameplay right now. <laughs> but I want to guys, I want to show you guys like the the fun of Everspace too. Though I guess you know some of you probably consider cheesing an enemy to be fun. So uh, there's, there's that. Is he? Re are his shields regenerating? Did we add that to Inquisitors? <laughs> yeah, I think it's because he's stuck as well. I don't think he's. <laughs> But is he stuck? Here, let's try this. Let's just say no to shields completely. Because we might as well use them since we got them, right? You know, it'd be really silly to just forget about your, you know. It looks like he's bugged. He's not even going down in. Uh, he's, oh, he's, 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 he's going down. He's definitely moving. He is definitely moving. And I'm definitely getting closer because I really want to hit with this. But again, those shields. Ugh, those shields. You know, do we have a do we have a pulse slate? We do. Let's just do this for the time being to get the shields down. Oh my gosh. Charge up Jaeger. Thank you. Good, good, good. And we'll just kind of Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Everspace 2 slowest Inquisitor kill stream. I am your host, Eric, community ambassador for Rocket Chain. You too can find a means to overcome such enemies by just playing like a coward. It's not too difficult. It just requires patience and understanding of the varying weapons within Everspace 2. For example, in order to best the shields of our target, we swapped to a Jaeger. And now we're going back to our Rogue Rattler, which is in fact a new set item coming to a store near you. And by store, I mean the the store page because you'll just download it for free this fall. Oh, he's totally getting his shield back. Ah! But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna destabilize 
so that we can take it out slightly faster. Any percent slow run? Nice, nice, very good, very good. You know what, let's go ahead and answer some questions while we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that many. Okay, that's fine, let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, Jeff Vader over on Twitch uh, wants to know, is there any chance we will get co-op implemented into MSP2? I love this question, but no. Uh, we have been pretty stern in our statements on the front. Everspace 2 was designed to be and will always be a single player game. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's not going to change. That's not going to change. So all of the upcoming updates and improvements and fixes and additions and uh, expansions to the game, uh, let's let's make sure we do have a strong understanding. It will remain a single player experience. There are no plans to make it multiplayer. Cool, cool. cool. Uh, Lizard Jerry's uh, got a specific question for you. Uh, when entering an unknown signal, does it skybox generated? Uh, is it based on the current location in the system? Yeah, the skybox is meant to generate based on where you are currently at in the system. Uh, we have seen some reports where it's not doing that. Uh, and I mean, we've had this bug that's kind of come up a, a number of times in uh, early access even. It's just kind of a byproduct of trying to make the game understand where it's at and uh, what to display. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. We got... We got two energy from that. <laughs> What's the other? Let's more questions. <laughs> yeah, we've got more questions. Yeah, don't we? Um, a couple of law questions actually, because he brought up about the fact that uh, Okar do not like water. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so pretty much slithering peanut and, and bearded frog have kind of asked a combination question. So sure. Are you saying that Okar have another liquid that they need to survive? Humans need water because they're water based and. Uh, Frog was, if all cars hate water, do they not bathe? How do they clean themselves? No, so um, th these are valid questions. And I think that what you can do is you can refer to uh, similar creatures that the Okar were inspired by uh, in our catalog of earthen creatures. And see, there are a lot of actually desert-based lizards that also don't really like water so much. Um, and a lot of what they do is they store water. They don't drink very much of it, they store water. Um, but they still require water. Um, and they can go for, some of them, years without actually drinking. Uh, we kind of based some biological traits of the Okar off of that sort of, uh, those earthen style, of the biology. Just to make the Okar a little bit interesting. But, uh, pretty sure that they would also operate off of water. They're still going to need that in their systems. They're not rock people. So. Nice. Right. Moving on. Got three more questions lined up. Uh, sure. JR Panciotti over on YouTube uh, with reference to the jellyfish. Uh, is there any chance that we could build a kind of vegan weapon that disperses or stuns the local animal wildlife so you don't have to murder them? Was the question to build a vegan weapon? Is that what I heard? Yeah. Yes. Um, no, there are no plans to incorporate vegan weaponry into Everspace 2. We have heard people talk about how they don't like killing jellyfish, and frankly speaking, I don't either. It's sad. They are my friends. But we're, we're not really changing that. Cool, oh, cool. Uh, just a little bit of an update from Ingmar, the legend, uh, who's in uh, Twitch chat. Has just said for information about consoles, because uh, we have tracked an issue where some of the skyboxes were not um, creating properly. He yep. says that skyboxes not having stars in temporary locations, the system skymap uh, were looked up by the name, and the lookup function wasn't working. Patch to be released soonish. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, Ingmar. You are all kinds of awesome. Really appreciate you being here. <clears throat> Love those clarifying details. It's very, very good. Do we have another question? Uh, I've got two more, yes. Um, right. One from Flory, uh, just literally again about jellyfish. We seem to have uh, Flory. created a bit of interest. Cheers. Yes, Flory. Yes, legend. Um, 
in the collected data from the players, uh, is there collected data of how many jellyfish have been killed? Oh, gosh. I'd have to ask Andy. I don't know. It's never been something <laughs> I've ever looked up. Um, so, I mean, maybe it, it might be. But legitimately, I don't know. And it would make me sad to know what that would look like. So, uh, hmm. so I will avert my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Slurine and, B and Beardy Frog over on YouTube, uh, it's not really a question, it's just an observation. They seem to have noticed that uh, the Inquisitor loot drops have been bugged for a while, so I don't know if we need to pass that on to the team. To... It might, yeah, it might be a dev build. Um, they definitely yeah. should be dropping more loot than that. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get that reported um, and make sure that it's fixed. Pretty sure it's not happening, though, in the uh, current live build. And if it is... We'll, we'll probably move that up the list a little bit more because they should definitely be dropping loot. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do yeah, see a question Flory that just... just... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh you're all right. Uh, yeah, uh, Flory was just wondering uh, the numbers because in case he had to report it to Petter. <laughs> mm. <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, so um, I did see another question just pop up and I'm going to answer it real quick. Um, just Steiny Goat asking about the purple question marks. Um... Yeah, so basically I'm underleveled. And those purple marks basically say, if you go here, you're gonna get messed up. Cause these are at least three or more levels higher than you. That's what those indicate. So when we, if we were to go there, I mean, I suppose I could show it as an example, but also the reason why I flew back over here is cause I'm trying to like, I wanna grind some random locations a little bit. Um, and I was getting purple over here in Shabar Sounds. So I came back over here, and over here it's a lower level region. So the, this distress call is not purple. It's not too higher level than me. It's a little bit higher level, but much more doable. Wow. If I can hit my targets, that is. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to use that to my advantage. That's that's all that is. And gray, if, so, if a location is like gray and it has an arrow underneath it, that means it is three or more levels below you. So you're not gonna find very good loot. You're not gonna find um, um, a lot of experience gains, stuff like that. So we have it both existing in the game space like that. I break the shields. Ow. Ow. Let's go help this guy out. We'll keep oh, just got one last oh. quick question just to, to fit yeah. that one in. Uh, it's nice and quick. Uh, Dibsy over on Twitch is just wondering, do we have an ETA when the new set items uh, will go live into the game? Not an, a specific ETA. Oh, we did increase the health on that, so I can't cheese this anymore. That was a good call. Uh, <laughs> um... So no, we don't have an, an official ETA yet. Um, the plan is still this fall and, oh, I need to get some boost before I fly in there. Um, and I can also say that our plans for this fall are still matched up correctly. Thank you. You're welcome. So no changes to that, to uh, what, we, what we said. The fall is still looking like good timing. Crusader, ugh. I'm trying to figure out which target I need to address here. And I don't like either of them. Come on, shields drop, please. Oh, come on! How did I miss that shot? Oh. Yeah. Okay. here another signal decoder plating fusion core all right all basic stuff we can talk a little bit more about blightmonger we're not finding any more things that are dropping 
But uh, I will say this, um, and I'm going to kind of leave it open for more discussion in the future because, you know, we need to. There's, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, actually. Um, and I'm being very team in what I am approaching in the streams because there will be the right timing and spacing for us to share with you what's coming up. Um, but uh, one of the things that I kind of mentioned briefly in, I think it was two weeks ago, actually, was that set items, the way that they're dropping is actually gonna be changed. Um, so for those of you who are here, you're listening intently. Um, because we're flying the Kite Nebula, we are going to, this is where you would find Blightmonger, for example, from Kite Nebula. And that also does mean that there are a couple of changes um, to the prior two sets that were in the game. Bloodstar, would drop specifically from the Deep Fields, the Shattered Planetoid, the Hinterlands, and I think also from the Cold Sun Orbit. That was the only places where you could get them from Bloodstar units. That's no longer the case. Bloodstar drops from all of Cedo now. If you are in Cedo, doesn't matter if you're facing against Bloodstar or not, they will actually drop. And that's all the more I'm gonna tease that information on that's a healthy bit of information for all of you. And I wanted to highlight that truly because there have been a lot of concerns out there about upcoming sets and where Bloodstar currently is at. So we'll have even more information to share on how the various set items will be showing up in your game and ways for you to stack that in your favor if you're looking for something specific. Isn't it nice whenever you've got this player agency in control of what you're gonna find just a little bit more. Very good. Come on, give me give me another location that's not purple. Please and thank you. Probably a couple more of this. I'm a little hesitant to uh, to dive into um, well actually. Wait, X marks the spot 18? No, it's 17? Really? We're level? Okay, shoot, we're gonna, we're gonna at least start it. We're at least start it. For some reason, I thought it was higher level. Oh, I see, I see the question over on Twitch. You can grab mines, yep, yep, yep. You certainly can. Just gotta time it correctly. There's a couple subtle little details like that uh, within Everspace 2 pleasantly to your advantage should you locate them um but yeah it's even better if you get the right type of striker because then they can just grab drones and throw them around that's nice <laughs> could be a lot of fun so we're gonna dive into this location we're gonna clear out a little bit of it then we're probably gonna utilize our quick save and then we are going to transition to screenshots <clears throat> I see a question over on YouTube as well. Just kind of like extending this question segment, but you know, got a little bit of extra time here. So Lord M says, are they working on a DLC expansion? The answer is yes. We are working on free content to add to the game later this year. And we're working on an expansion DLC uh, paid for um, to come later. We'll have more information as to when it's coming. Um, we'd like to get out the door sooner than later, of course, but it is expansive that's why we do refer to it as an expansion instead of just calling it dlc i think there's kind of like this stipulation of dlc just kind of adds a couple of things here and there and um frankly speaking um our free content update is kind of the equivalent of what a lot of other games deem dlc worthy that you have to spend money on and we didn't want to do that we just want to make more stuff for the game because we can that that's all the DLC that we're working, that you will purchase, it's going to expand the game. And if any of you have played Everspace 1 as a reference point, you look at the DLC encounters on that front, holy crap. Everspace 1 was increased, its, its size, the game size was increased by something like 30% from its DLC that costs a third the cost of the game. Expansion. We're aiming to do that with Everspace 2, and uh, 
Everspace 2 is a little larger than Everspace 1. Yeah. Alright. Let's do some stuff. Whoop! Line up these lenses! I look over, I start seeing questions. Will we get this? Will we get that? Will we get the other thing? I love you all so much. Maddox, I still haven't found Eduardo. We're still working on being able to pet the dog, okay? It takes time. Imagine Supernova slash Valkyrie in Galaxy on Fire 2. That's a pretty good reference point, I would say. <laughs> Couple more ancient lenses here just to move things along. We can kind of keep answering a couple questions that are floating in though. Extending the questions if we've got more. I've got a couple lined up, yeah. Um, Dibsy, uh, again over on Twitch, is just wondering, uh, are there any plans on using procedurally generated planets stroke systems? Um, I mean, we do have a little bit, not a lot, of procedural generation like the, the main thing is that um we have over a hundred handcrafted locations across um six solar systems and we have athon is kind of like the the last stand location uh for now that could possibly change I'm not saying it will change I'm just saying that that's how it is right now in this particular game space and um for the locations that generate, like as we were flying around and we had that, um, the signal, distress signal, that location, we have assets that will combine to be a procedurally generated environment for you to explore. And the way that the level scales and the enemy types that show up and even the resources that generate is based on what region that location will appear in. So if you're in the Kayit Nebula, for example, you're going to have Redeemers, you're gonna have, um, you're you're gonna have um, uh, uh, like Phasium show up. Phasium's popular in Kite Nebula. Uh, you're gonna have stuff like that. Whereas if you were to find a random location in Union, you're gonna run into maybe a an outlaw base uh, that G and B are present in, and they're actively fighting against each other. Um, you might run into uh, just like some heavy resource deposits of more common stuff, like um, uh, just like your standard sort of crystals and. and irons uh and drake you know it, it keeps going and going right um there's also the battle support that can show up where you're seeing full-fledged factions duking it out um in a procedurally generated location um just to kind of fill in those gaps but again over a hundred handcrafted intentionally designed locations uh, otherwise so yeah Do we have more questions? Also, um, uh, yes. I'm, I'm not sure if I should be doing this live on stream. I feel really bad some people talking about the jellies. <laughs> that please not everyone. That's Eric killing them, not me. <laughs> 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 That's fair. All right, let's let's start another question. <laughs> Uh, right, um, uh, kind of a follow-up question from uh, Frog over on YouTube uh, regarding going back to the Okar again. Um, so, do the Okar not bathe then, or do they use some alternative form of cleaning themselves? Otherwise, wouldn't they smell terrible? Uh, Real-life lizards are obviously not sent into bathing and have no need for it. Yeah, no, I I think that this is a question. Um, <laughs> Um, I'll have to call Tareen and, and see what he would say in response to that. Um, in general, though, I would assume that there would be a desire to have some degree of cleanliness. Um, what that specifically looks like, you know, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be the first to tell you right here, live, world premiere reveal that we haven't really discussed the hygiene of Okar um, in depth. So... There you go. World premiere reveal right there, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we are swapping over to this pulse. 
because our rattler ain't gonna do nothing for us. And if there is another question, I am happy to hear it. Yeah, we've got a couple lined up. Uh, cable fast over on YouTube. Uh, has there been any thoughts about adding more to the super light generated events, such as the distress calls and the unknown signals? Um, I mean, we're pretty happy with where it stands. Like we, we actually, we ended up adding quite a few. Oh, why did I do that? Um, we actually ended up adding quite a few um, through the course of early access, just getting a feel from how players were engaged with that content. Um, and the variety, like, again, we do feel pretty good about it. I mean, there's everything from just random encounters with enemies to base raids to factions duking out with one another to ships that need help, whether it's like resources or destroying mines, um, whether it's, uh, I mean, there's, there's also, um, there's traps that enemies can lay as well. Oh my gosh, what am I getting into here? Goodness gravy. Um, there, there's a lot of different things that can occur in those spaces and we're, we're pretty happy with those results, honestly. We are pretty happy with those results. So, yeah, there's not like a, there's not like a rush to add more, but I suppose if more ideas come up and they feel good, it's possible. Why are there so many redeemers? Ah! <laughs> Technically, lore-wise, the redeemers and the uh, ancients are not friends. They should be fighting each other. Yeah, but they didn't kill the jellies, did they? You did. Touche. <laughs> All right. Touche. This this isn't a matter of them defending the territory. No, they're like you killed the jellies time for you to die and that's uh honestly i can understand that that's that's totally that's totally a fair criticism uh, speaking of die uh, wow here let's just let's do this for a moment let's gain ourselves a slight advantage Ah, oh, good, now they're fighting each other. I just needed to cloak. They forgot all about me. They thought I exploded in my mess. Ah. Yep. Do we have another another question? Uh, we do, yes. Um, I kind of got a speculative question from Flory. You know what they're like, you know. They, oh, they right. throw these in from time to time. Uh, will we ever get another means to travel like a wormhole generator or will it be super light and special bypass only uh, it's, <laughs> what, cer what <laughs> it, it's certainly it's one of those things that's definitely possible i mean that's going to depend on what other content is added to the game and we'll have more information on that in the future when we uh can talk about what that content looks like it might be applicable it might not be applicable at all so yep a clever question, but denied. <laughs> right, one more question lined up. Yeah, sure. Um, I am the Forty Two over on Twitch. Is wanting to know uh, while switching the ship in the hangar. The only th one thing missing are the perks. They are not changed. So when I change ship, I need to manage to change the perks. Is there any plan for a shipbound perk binding? Oh, I see. Yeah, we've we've had this question before too. Like, there's some individuals who would like to have it to where, when like they swap their saved ship, for example, in the home base, um, that it would swap like um, the perks that they had set up for that particular ship too. Um, kind of like, um, I think the best equivalent it would be like the the um, Diablo. I think they called are they loadouts? I can't remember what they're specifically called. But where, like, when you choose a different one, it, it sets all of your different skills, abilities, items, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the short answer of that is no, we don't have plans to do that. Um, but it's definitely something that we are acknowledging would be really nice to have. Um, we'll have to get back to you on that if that's going to be a, a, even possible or not. Because um, it's definitely, again, it's something that has come up a number of times. Um, something that I think our team overall would agree would be a nice addition, but it also, at the end of the day, requires um, being actionable with how we've already designed the game and how to build into that, right? Because um, there are going to be some things that sound really stinking cool to add to the game that just can't happen based on uh, technological reasons, 
right? It's a matter of we have to devote our time and energy into these things that are going to add the biggest bang for their buck for the game, as opposed to spending a lot of time on things that are going to add a little bit more. Um, yeah, and I'm not even saying that that would add just a little bit. I do think that that would actually add quite a bit of, of content quality. Um, but it's, again, one of those things where there's a lot of delegation, a lot of discussion, and I can't simply put, we, we can't guarantee that that's gonna be something that happens. Um, I'm putting a lot of em emphasis on this though, because you are heard. This is definitely something we've discussed a few times. And I wanna make sure that you, you recognize that, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about this very plainly, right? Very openly. Um, so yeah. We'll see. Hopefully, but not in the plans. Maybe we'll have more information on that in the future. Eric killing jellies for fun. Oh, my, my finger slipped. <laughs> Whew. All right. Do we have one more, one more question before I'm going to uh, save and we're going to move over to screenshots, I think. Yeah, uh, Pesky Husky uh, over on YouTube is wanting to know... Uh, having an absolute awesome graphics in the game, uh, do you have any plans to create cutscene like short movies on Everspace 2 events? Probably something like the colonial Okao War explained a little more deeply or whatnot, uh, but not exactly, not in the game exactly, but on YouTube or some other platform. Oh, so like a, a, like a short story sort of thing yeah. that's using in-game assets? I mean, that sounds awesome, but that also sounds like a lot of work. Um, and we're devoted to making the game, not making like short movies and stuff. Um, I, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a big ask. So no, there's no plans for that at all. Um, we have really enjoyed our time working with, um, our, you know, fan other fantastic teams to make all of the elements of Everspace 2 come together, breathe life through those um, beautifully like painterly like cutscenes. Um, that's the stylization we want to use to bridge those gaps. But as far as in-game cutscenes, the best you're gonna get are gonna be like the Gang Wars conclusion, I think. That one probably excites a lot of people where you're seeing like two big fleets in game against one another. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yep. Ouch, pain. Oh, I forgot we have our pulse laser. This is fine, honestly. It might be better to have a pulse laser as a backup here. Intuitive web mines. Yeah, but we haven't we haven't gotten anything new. I wanted more new stuff. Ah, uh, all right. Well, at least we got the Blightmonger set item, and so you could see the new set that we are bringing in fruition. And just because nothing else dropped, I did give you that little extra information, guys, that sets, um, they, there are specific ways that they will be dropping. Um, so if any of you missed that segment, uh, tough. You'll just have to join us next week or the week after that, whenever we have more information on how sets work and stuff like that. Uh, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Man, I am just savage right now. but. I w I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump out of this, and we're going to go over to our community segment. We have lots of um, uh, screenshots, actually, because it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I think I have 24 screenshots or something like that. So uh, give me just one moment. These are the places that you can go, by the way, if you want to go uh, support um, you know, us and, and, and Everspace 2's community. Join us in the Discord on Twitter and YouTube, uh, Twitch. Um, Oh man, I suppose we have to change that bird to an X now. That's kind of weird. I <laughs> uh, didn't even think about that. We also have the Instagrams and Reddit as well. We're pretty active all across the board. So if you've got a burning question and you didn't make a stream, you can find us on there. Uh, but of course we love it when you show up to these streams, we give you a lot of information and sometimes a little too much. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. It's, it's almost like private information that you're getting that nobody else gets. Pretty stinking cool, if I do say so myself, and I do say so. <clears throat> so, um, in this segment, we're gonna be highlighting, again, 24 shots that I collected through the Discord, um, and I'm gonna be telling you about who captured them, 
we're going to give it praise, huzzah, and then we are going to answer even more questions. So this one comes from an Eastern European. You gotta love Bob, right? You gotta love Bob. What a classy drone he is. Very much enjoy that. Can we just clarify that the Eastern European name literally is the username of the person, not just some random person from an Eastern European country? Yeah, yeah. who knows? They, they, I mean, <laughs> they might not even be in Europe. It's just all a facade. You know? That's the joy of usernames. Or the demise. <clears throat> I'm not sure which, but regardless. Yeah, it's from an Eastern European. Very, very good. Let's transfer over to Chester. Chester's got two shots. This is the first one. Um, very electrifying quite like this one. And if we've got a question, let's go ahead and answer it and I'll transfer between Chester's two shots. Uh, I've got nothing up oh. to now. Yeah. Okay, well, that's totally fine. So guys, if you do have questions, again, these questions can circulate around the Blightmonger sets. We showed that today. You can ask a little bit more about set items. I'll see what I can provide you. I'm not gonna, you know, say anything too much on that front uh, beyond what I can, of course. We did also show the very minor tweak to the item attributes or excuse me, item traits. So now they're now starred. This is also by Chester, by the way, uh, showing off a um, look-alike to Poe Dameron's X-Wing, I believe, in the Star Wars franchise. Um, and yeah, beyond that, it was kind of a light, light day for teases, but this is going to continue to grow. Um, and so don't be shy coming into these uh, channels, asking these questions so that we can kind of uh, bang out all those details. Because again, these streams are for you guys. It's important for us to let you know the scoop of what's going on. We're a transparent team. Um, and yeah, we, we really like you a bit, you could say. So it's good stuff. It's good stuff. <clears throat> so next shot we have comes from Curtis. I do, oh my gosh, I, I love, I love widescreen shots. And the color composition of this is just absolutely chef's kiss. This is phenomenal. You know, Michael's talked in the past whenever he's shown some of his Michael selects about the composition um, with orange and blue. Like these are natural complementary colors. Uh, they're complete opposite. And so they add a tremendous dynamic. They stand out from one another. And here it's showcased so beautifully. We've got these lights in the background. We've got these darks in the foreground alongside this very positive color usage. And this, this just really slaps. I, I love this shot so much. Fantastic little shot, Curtis. Thank you for the share. We have this other shot that also comes from Curtis. Another delightful widescreen. You can't go too wrong with just taking widescreen shots in general, but the composition here, again, putting a lot of emphasis on where the Union Star is at uh, and shining its way over to the Vindicator. I believe it's a Vindicator, making its rounds uh, probably in Yawin orbit. Uh, just pleasant little shots. Love it so much. Love it so much. So, any questions sneak in yet? Any? No, not yet. Not yet. I think right, uh, so as well, we'll this uh, sc screenshot that you've been showing the past two, he is a virtual photographer as well for many nice. other games. And he does some brilliant shots as well. It shows. On Twitter or X, yeah. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely shows. Yeah, no, they're fantastic. They're fantastic little shots. So, good, good stuff. This next shot comes from Dark Chaos playing back through Everspace 1, which still looks pretty dang good. I do say so myself. Um, definitely love how whenever you're flying through Everspace 1 again, for, for all of those veterans out there who have played Everspace 1, um, man, I, I had such a blast actually, it was like a couple weeks ago when I, I was playing through and it felt like I was playing through Everspace 2 with how some sites were getting generated and whatnot. It just, it felt so good. Uh, this was another shot from Dark Chaos flying through a, a scene. Um, it's, it's almost like you could pin the location of where it's at in Everspace 2, even though it's from Everspace 1, so the locations didn't technically exist yet. Even though we actually did kind of have the locations exist, that's a, that might be room for a fun story at some point. But um, yeah, good, good stuff. So nice shots from Dark Chaos. Uh, these next couple shots are from DH397, just highlighting some of his ship designs. I always like highlighting ship designs. I think it's pleasant. I think it's fun just to show what you're out there flying with. I think this is a curiously colored one. I love how metallic the red is, making this particularly 
dynamic sheen effect going on. Almost looks like Legend was painted separately. Uh, it's kind of fun. And then he also has, oh, whoops, wrong button. Also has this gunship. You can never go wrong with a whole lot of black and a little bit of red. Like that's just, it's, oh, love the way that comes together. Love the way that comes together. Very nice ship indeed. Ah, oh, so good. We also have a shot from Fatal Shadow playing through Everspace One. Oh, gosh, this makes me actually want to go back and play Everspace One again. Everspace One and Two, like they're similar games, but they are so very different. Uh, Everspace One is, is one of those where it's like, oh, you, you got like an evening available because you don't have any children. Um, yeah, like you could just play a run. It's going to go for like an hour or two and it just feels so good. Um, and if you do have children, you sneak in in the middle of the night uh, because you're not sleeping anyway. And it's awesome. Uh, I'm just saying just random, you know, just, I, I know a guy I, who knows a guy who has children. Uh, I have five kids. Anyway, I think that this shot is nice. Um, we also have this shot from Flory. Um, I love the way that you've positioned this to where it's just like full on assort, assault from this tormentor. And you're just like, eh, don't care. Get wrecked missiles. That shield's position is just perfectly placed. And it makes you look pretty dang badass, honestly. I also think that the coloration here is just solid as well. Almost classic colonial colors, almost. Um, I think you've done a great job with just capturing that and as well as like the, uh, the energy from it, you know, having all of these uh, little particles, uh, the light kind of reflecting off of that too. It just seems pretty dang cool. So nice shot, definitely digging it. So uh, this is also another shot that comes from Floyd. Do we have a question? Sorry, I'm like. Uh, yes, Boots okay. just inquiring with oh, yeah. regards uh, when you go back into Everspace One. Do you ever stream those shenanigans on your own channel? No, I, I don't. I actually haven't done any personal streaming in a while because I just haven't had time for it because I've been devoting my time to you guys. And that's not a flex or anything. That's just what I've been doing. Um, I very much love the community that we have. And it just means that I haven't had time to, you know, do those sort of things um, with my own time. Also, I have five children. so. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, um, it's it's... It is kind of funny that you say that though, because Gary and I somewhat recently talked about how we want to do a little bit more sort of playful shenanigans, maybe here and there. Um, so keep your eyes <laughs> peeled in the Discord in particular. We might pop up from time to time and just start streaming a game or two uh, and just join us in the comms. <laughs> that could possibly be fun, maybe, could happen. I don't yeah, know. Could be, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, it's good, good stuff, much like this shot from Flory. Very ice indeed <clears throat> next up we got joe the casual nerd i know right actually wait i have a button for that i have a button for that uh where's the button where's the where's... it's near your g key because you can't the... find that either <laughs> absolute wrecked oh my god no i can't actually find it i just changed all of my sounds because i tried i was wanting to add some new ones for you guys but uh we'll have to we'll have to get the button ching a little bit later it seems uh, but this shot comes from uh, Joe the Casual Nerd. Um, had a couple of nice shots. I just, I like these environmental shots a lot. Um, it just, it just pleases me. It's nice, you know, very, very good. Um, I do see, uh, well, I'm seeing a couple of questions. <laughs> yeah, I've been firewalling that one. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Seems like a really good time to remind everybody, the folks at home, that you know all questions are appreciated. All questions are are delightful. Uh, just keep in mind that we're probably going to be more prone to answering some than others. And if you get ghosted, um, that that happens. It can happen. Don't don't let that be you. <laughs> this next shot comes from also Joe, the casual nerd. Uh, he explained this one as a butt clinching moment. Uh, kind of like earlier in the stream when I had like uh, one whole point, goodness, that was so satisfying to work through. Those, those are actually the moments, like moments like this, that I just feel so good. And like, this is the rush that I desire from Everspace 2. Like being able to be challenged by an opponent, not just absorb 20,000 shots and then one shot, uh, you know, an enemy, like really be challenged to utilize all of your equipment, especially um, if you're doing like self, uh, 
self-imposed challenges, like you only use your weapons and devices, because that's totally what I was doing and not accidentally not using everything else. And it just, it brings it together so well. It's a lot of fun for me to just be in this moment and like filled with energy. And I, th I do think that this is captured really well from Joe the Casual Nerd here. So nice shot, good, good stuff. Uh, next shot we have from Kaza, who's been uh, in the chat, I think today. Yeah, I see him, I see him. Uh, this is a nice, nice clean shot. Nice clean shot. Uh, the lighting is pleasant here. And also, man, I just, I really love that tier four ship. Oh my gosh, it is truly a shame that we're not working on any more tier four ship wings at all. Uh, <laughs> But no, seriously, it, it looks great. I love the ship design. I love your motion into this scene. It, it just feels so right. Um, and I love exploring these worlds that we've been able to create for you. Even with these handcrafted locations, there's so many little secrets and nuances and even references dotted along the asteroids. It just, man, it's so pleasant. It's so good. And it's great to see that you guys are embracing that too and sharing your love. Ah, oh, it's so good. Because now we have this other one. This is a vertical shot, of course, um, that has this energy orb being carried through. I love the positioning of the planet in the background. It's what makes it, right? You got that background foreground interaction. Um, ready to tell a story of what happened here, it seems like. Just, I love it. I love it so much. Questions? Uh, nothing. Everybody's nothing? stunned. That's yeah. fine. I mean, honestly, I'm stunned too. I think these are fantastic shots. I think that these come together so well. It's always a pleasure for us to be able to highlight these at the end of the stream. Um, keep it up. It's pretty awesome. We got this shot from Secret President. I selected this one because we've had a lot of blue shots and we needed more orange. <laughs> but also, like, that is so dangerously close uh, to, it, like, in this location, anybody who's been to Drake and at this site, uh, Zerulia Base, knows that when you're flying that low, you are taking damage, some serious damage. You are playing a risky game, Secret President, but uh, do appreciate the share bringing that home. So very nicely done. Very, very good. We have a shot from Sonozaki. Uh, he actually shared several, so I'm going to have a couple to roll through. Uh, this one is just exciting. It almost feels like an Everspace one shot that's been like dolled up a little bit because you don't commonly fight um, Ogar Corvettes, like hardly at all um, in Everspace 2. There's the occasional sort of engagement that must be had. And this is just a nice action shot, honestly. Um, a little busy in the middle, but you know, it's, but it's, it's fine. It's great. I love the way that it comes together. And of course, it's after my own heart because it's on widescreen and I just really, I really like widescreen shots. <laughs> really clean, really good looking. Uh, another one from Sonazaki, and this one just feels like a poster. Just ready to like print that out, slap it on my wall. It's so, so pleasant. Really clean. It's the invitation into this world is so profound here. Just seeing all of the mining interests at work, that looming planet off in the distance. Is it safe? Is it, uh, is it like, well, what's going on there? Is it, it's, there's so much mystery to this. Uh, yet the invitation to explore and to discover is so profound. It's captured very well, Sonazaki. Super cool. Uh, Brain just went to Dune with that shot. Yeah, actually, that, that's, yeah, I can see that too, very much so. Very much so. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> We've got this shot from Sonazaki as well. The last one from his collection. Just loving the way that you've got this massive light source in the lower left from the uh, the storm of Zarkov, like reflecting solar waves into the, the gas field thing. Um, and then you've got this massive asteroid in the that's being used as a port gate from, by outlaws. Um, I think it also is just a really pleasant shot that, again, tells a story. I just love those story-centric shots. I just, I dig them. I dig them so much. And it uh, comes together so well from Sonazaki. All right, we're kind of in the home stretch as we need to be since we're almost done with the stream. We got this shot that comes from Spoot Knight. I believe he said that he colored this ship for somebody's birthday. It was like a birthday stream sort of thing. Well, that's a fine looking ship. That's pretty dang neat. I very much enjoy that. So nice looking ship. 
nice shot. Let's just zoom in a little bit more on the ship itself. Let's get those added details. Very much love the way that comes together. It's a nice work, sir. I also think the overall composition, I mean, it works. It definitely is bringing it home. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely dig it. Mm -hmm. uh, one question's just come in from uh, Bearded oh. Frog over on YouTube. Okay. Uh, They've noticed that there seems to be like a, a, a similar chance of dropping modules as there is uh, legend weapons in rifts. Um, is a they said, can we please have legend weapons have a lower drop than the modules when you go into a rift? Because otherwise, it seems to be that you get a lot of replication in terms of legendaries. Um, so you're that sounds like a suggestion, um, which you know I'm not going to necessarily disagree with it. I definitely know that we've got some plans with the Rift and how we're kind of adjusting some elements on that front, uh, including how some things uh, tend to drop. So that's definitely something that should be brought up maybe in a Discord conversation or just posted on the forums. Um, I think that there might be something that we could that you we could observe from your recommendation and also maybe even affirm it, uh, depending on the direction that we are taking as well. So yeah, we'll see more about loot and rifts in the future. We'll definitely be talking about it. Definitely be talking about it. Uh, this shot that we've been staring at is from Thorideus? Thorideus? I think. Possibly. Um, and I like the way that their ship is flying out into space. Again, it's that sort of explorative storytelling that I just dig so much. It's a classic shot, but it works so well. Ah! Keep it coming. I love it. I love it. All right, two last shots, and then we are going to have to close down the stream because um, I'm going to have to actually get out of here pretty fast. So I don't think there's actually going to be after stream shenanigans today. I'm sorry, everybody, but uh, sometimes it doesn't line up, and today is not looking like it's lining up. This shot comes from Warren Wur Run of Wur Run of Why. <laughs> yeah. Where it's an interesting username. <laughs> But um, I actually, I really enjoy the, the way that this one comes across because it feels like you are playing the game. It's, it's a perfect slice of what you are going to experience without any of the bull crap, right? Like this is, this is not some sort of like doctored up image of, oh, look at all these different opportunities that could potentially be out there. No, it's like, this is the game right here. This is your viewport into this world and how you'll be discovering the different things that are out there. And that's that's why I appreciate this one. Another kind of simple shot, if you will, but sometimes simplicity is the most beautiful things that you can yeah. find. And I think it comes across very well here from this user. So thank you for the share. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. Um, when I when I saw this shot, the first thing that I thought was Borderlands 3 because yeah. of the coloration. It almost yeah. looks like cell shading. Oh yeah, it does kind of, yeah, and it, it does have the Borderlands color to, oh my gosh, dude, now I see it so hard. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. That's really good. Um, but yeah, great shot. I love it. Um, it's It comes together so well. And last but not least, we have Zaka Malaka, Zaka, Zaka Malak, I think. Uh, and this shot comes from the original Everspace, just to top us off, giving us uh, a little bit more love of our classic game where it all kind of started moving us into Everspace 2. Actually, that's not true. A lot of you guys know where it actually started. You know, but still, Everspace 1 being our first game catapulting us into the PC and console market, we are so thrilled with how it's come across and just seeing the visuals and the shares that you guys continue to play uh, and enjoying it. It, it, oh, gosh, it's so nice. It's so good. So, uh, thank you so much for, for all of these shares, truly, from, from every single one of you, whether you've been in the stream, whether you had no idea that these are even highlighted in the streams, it doesn't matter because we love you. We love everything about how you are just embracing these experiences and having so much fun with it, because that was our goal. We wanted a quality experience that would bring you joy. So keep sharing that joy with us and we'll keep on working on new, exciting experiences for you to have fairly soon too. This fall is not too far away. So that's going to be awesome. Going to be great. So otherwise, um, if there were any other questions that were sort of floating out there, guys, I do have to go. I'm, I've got to hightail it out of here. But do keep in mind that we have the Discord. You can ask in the Ask RFG channel any time of day that you want, and we'll get responses uh, to you directly. Sometimes community persons will answer it because we have some outstanding community members, some of which are very much in these chats. 
right now. Uh, but otherwise, we want to make sure no question goes unanswered. That's that's not good for us. We don't want that to ever happen. So if you got a question, let us know. We will answer it. Otherwise, you guys have been absolutely awesome this stream. I have been absolutely... Eric, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being absolutely awesome. And we will catch you in the next one next week. Same time, maybe new content. Gary, do you have any last words to say? Toodles. <laughs> Excellent. Toodles. <laughs> That's totally my line. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, it.